Okay, so uh, it's 10.01. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to have with me my dear friend, Dr. Terry Obak on today's uh, inaugural Pillow Talk with Violet. <laughs> so, um, okay, I'm just going to share a gallery view so they can see you as well. Yeah, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me, Violet. It's so fun to be here. Yeah, so um, the reason, you know, why I started Pillow Talk, like one of the reasons is because, you know, you are in US and obviously mm -hmm. it's like you are not going to be able to join my lunch uh, date <laughs> because right, it's going right. to be in the middle of the night. But at the same time, you know, I really would love um, to have you on my talk, you know, on my show where, you know, I can really help share some of these wonderful experiences that you have with like my audience. So that's the mm -hmm. reason, you know, I decided to Thank create you. Pillow Talk. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're right, because I can't join. It's the middle of the night. Yes. You ha you know. So this is super. Beginning of the day for me and end of the day yes. for you. Yes, yes. So, um, Terry, I'm sure, you know, we are going to have a lot of our uh, common friends, you know, matchmakers, dating coaches yes. who are tuning in right now. But at the same time, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people who might have not uh, come come across your profile or they have not met you personally. So maybe you want to give a quick introduction about yourself? Sure, thank you. So I'm Dr. Terry Orbach, as you said, Violet. I'm also known as the Love Doctor. I'm a psychologist, a therapist, a professor at Oakland University in Michigan, and a research scientist at the University of Michigan Institute for Social Research. I'm a coach, an author, a speaker, and I do um, my own podcast as well called The Love Doctor Is In. Nice, I love that. So, um, Terry, how did you actually get into this profession or even this industry of like love? That's a good question, Violet. <laughs> um, well, I think it's always been in my blood. I grew up in a very therapy-oriented household. My father is a psychiatrist. My mother's a therapist. My sister's a marriage and family therapist, and my brother's in healthcare. So, I think it's in my genes, if not in my household as a child. <clears throat> my parents used to say that I asked why even before I said mom and dad. Wow, so, um, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> So I've always been interested in relationships, especially both personally and professionally. I started when I got my PhD at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, studying psychology and then got into relationships. And it's always just been so wonderful. I am so interested in why people stay together and why they're happy when they stay together, why people break up and what mm -hmm. happens, how people feel and what their experiences are after they break up or get divorced. Wow. So it's always been in my blood and I've been married for 27 years. And that's both amazing, of my children, 27 years, wow. 27 years, right? Yes. I got married early though, like at two, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and both of my children are in mm -hmm. graduate school to be counselors and therapists as well. So it's wow. definitely it's really in the blood. Me. That's amazing. It's really in the blood, exactly. <laughs> So we, we have uh, quite a number of people who is watching with us right now. Hi guys. And then uh, we have Helen who have said hi. Yeah, so uh, please stay tuned and please feel free to post your questions because we are definitely going to take uh, any questions that you might have. Um, so, you know, Terry, obviously I can see that you love what you do. It's like, you know, like when you are sharing about like what you do, you know, like you're glowing. And I want to maybe spend a bit more time talking about this research that you have been doing, you know, like for the last how, how many years? Like it's you've been, been following this number of couples? Oh right. So God. for the last 32 years, I've been yes. following the same 373 couples. Wow. They all got married in 1986. Wow. 46% have divorced. And mm -hmm. so it's funded by the National Institutes of Health in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we've been following them over time to look at what keeps people together and happy, what breaks couples apart once people are divorced or they lose a spouse due to death. Who mm -hmm. repartners? Um, who feels good? Who repeats the pattern? Who gets divorced again? The mm -hmm. effects on children and also, right, who partners in a happy, healthy relationship over time? So I love the study. It's the largest of its kind in the United wow. States. And so I've published a lot in the science world mm -hmm. um, yeah. from this study, but in 2004, 
I realized that the only people who were reading my science-based articles were my colleagues, not my <laughs> husband, not my friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> my husband, I'd give him an article and he'd put it underneath the bed. I, oh, I no. read it here. <laughs> I think maybe it's it's so deep and so intellectual, you know, like um, mere mortals like us, we, we just don't understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, well, it's all full of those statistics, right? Mm -hmm. And those analyses. So what I decided to do mm -hmm. was coin myself as the love doctor in yes. 2004. Wow. And I've really loved taking the findings from this study and mm -hmm. making them accessible in yes. popular books, popular articles, radio yep. programs, podcasts, television shows. Mm -hmm. I have a PBS program in the United States as well and a TEDx wow. talk like you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I have loved translating mm -hmm. all the findings so that everyone can benefit from science because science is wonderful, it's yep. fun, and it should be accessible to everybody. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I think maybe just to give uh, some of our viewers a context of how we actually met. So, you know, like we met at mm -hmm. one of the trade conferences. So I think a lot right. of people, they are quite surprised to know that uh, matchmaking, you know, in the world of matchmaking and love, we do have conferences, you know. <laughs> yes, we do. Right, I so, know. <laughs> uh, so that, that's how we met. And I think we totally like just got on so well. And because like what you have said, like, you know, sometimes there are just a lot of, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, like, um, how would I put this, uh, very pc -ly. You know, like, there are a lot of <laughs> advice out there, but sometimes, you know, people just kind of think, are this, like, real advice based on data, you know, based on uh, right. science, or is it just mm -hmm. what we think? Yeah, and right. I think the great thing is that, you know, you have done the research, you know, you have done this research where you have spoken to this same 300 over couples for the last 32 years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and you yes. know, it, it gives a great context and it's um it shows that it's it's not fluffy, you know. That's um uh it's, it's really proper and I, that's what I really love about it. Oh, thank you. And and that's why I loved those conferences that we continue to both go to because everybody loves the data and loves the findings so yes. that they can infuse it into matchmaking, into coaching. Yes. Um, I love and I am a huge advocate now, Violet, of yeah. matchmaking. I tell all yes. my friends, all my clients, I'm also a therapist and coach. Yes. And so I say matchmaking is wonderful and mm -hmm. there is a science to matchmaking now as well. So that's wonderful. Thank you for accepting me <laughs> as a scientist. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, we have some other people who have joined us. Uh, hi, Ashley. Yeah, so Ashley, say happy to see this. Yeah, so um, Terry, I mean like um, I'm so excited to have you here to share something so important to us. So, you know, in the last, uh, I would say, you know, couple of weeks or, you know, like maybe uh, even uh, more than a month now, a lot of countries, you know, like uh, where you are, where I am, you know, you are in US, I'm in Singapore, a lot of countries have gone on a certain level of lockdown, you know, be it a full lockdown, a semi-lockdown. And um, what that means is that a lot of people now, they are staying at home um, a lot more okay. than what they are used to. Right, yes. and I think we are starting to hear reports. I think first from China because you know China was the first country that went on lockdown. You know, we start right. hearing stories where you know people are getting like a, a divorce once they get out of lockdown because yes. you know I, I don't know maybe during that uh, period of time they realize that why am I married to this person or or maybe they had conflicts that they just couldn't resolve and once they get out of lockdown they just want to get far far away from each other and I believe right. you know we are hearing such stories from the US. As well from Europe. So, you know, I think this is so important that we help um, couples out there to really right. work through this because I think sometimes, you know, when uh, people are in such a situation, they think that they are all alone. They think it's all them. You know, this is what I'm seeing a lot of the times because sometimes people will come to me and say, oh, you know, my husband behaves this way. My uh, wife behaves this way. And <laughs> they will be very taken when I tell them, I say, you know, if you change the husband or you change the wife, this is still going to happen. <laughs> I like that, Violet. And that is so true. I mean, all couples have very common issues and problems. And yeah. exactly what you said, Violet, that when people are quarantined, when people are staying at home, what we find is that it is so atypical. Most couples, 
I would probably say 95% of couples are not used to spending 24 seven together without any of those other distractions like going out of the house for work, going out to meet friends, going out to visit family, right? Hobbies, interests, sports, the gym, even going to the store, right? And so what we have are two people and maybe others as well with children and extended family staying together in the house. And what happens is, is that you're not used to that. You don't yeah. have space. You yeah. don't have um, other people outside of the household to help you, right? Yes. With other distractions. And so what we have is little irritations, little annoyances, things that didn't bother you before now bother you. And yeah. I think what's happening is that people are having differences. They're having differences in terms of news consumption. One mm. partner wants to watch the news every single day, every hour, right? Has yeah. the television on. And the yeah. other partner says, I don't want to see it at all. Yeah. We yeah. have differences in terms of protection, in terms of safety issues. We yeah. have differences in just emotional reactions to the challenges and to the stress. Yeah. And what I would like to say, Violet, is that differences between partners are normal, are typical. We are not the same and we are not going to behave the same and we're not going to react the same. So all of us have differences. So anyone out there who has a partner, <laughs> right? Like me, right? One partner wants to watch the news. My husband loves to look online all the time and comes in the morning and tells me everything, right? And I don't really want to watch as much, right? Yep. And so yep. those differences what we want to do is accept those differences. Mm. They're normal. They don't mean we're in trouble. They don't mean that we're not right for one another. We are two different partners in a couple or in a relationship. Yeah. Thank you so much, Terry, for that. And I think that is so real because, you know, like obviously different people deal with like the current situation, the current challenge very differently. So, you know, for example, like, um, I, I was talking to this other COVID-19 survivor, you know, like just uh, two days ago. And then, you know, he was sharing with me that, you know, when he realized that he had it and then he was leaving um, uh, and, and he was talking to his wife and his child and, you know, it crossed his mind that this could be the last time that he was going mm -hmm. to see them. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me like, How, did you feel the same? So and I was like just saying like, oh, maybe I'm a bit too optimistic. <laughs> you know, I'm always like overly optimistic. Right. So I say that that Everything didn't even cross fine. my mind. <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, I'm the type that I'm like, oh, it's, it's good. It's all good. You know, I'm sure I'll come out of this great and things like right. that. Right. And, and I think what you have brought up is so relatable because, you know, like I might be feeling this way, but my partner might not be feeling this way. And as a result, you know, like my partner might be someone who is, you know, like looking at the news all the time, like being very worried, being very concerned, you know, like just being very affected by the negativity. And I could be the person who is like, la di da, you know, it's all good, you know, I'm sure we'll come out of this right. all right. And, and and those, yes. Yeah. That's and that's really hard, right? For most couples. Exactly. Yeah. Even Violet, another difference that I'm seeing a lot is that because it is challenging, it is stressful. Um, we're not able to get out of our houses. Yeah. One partner saying, okay, I want to spend time alone and read a book, do a puzzle by myself, go online listen to some podcasts and the other partner is saying, I want to be with you, right? I need <laughs> hugs. I want to spend time with you. And so we have opposite responses. And so what yes. happens is, is that oftentimes more than likely that's going to lead to disagreements. That's going to lead to conflict. So one yeah. of the things I talk a lot about Violet is to accept those differences, mm -hmm. know that they're going to occur, you know, be understanding, be empathic. There are common compromises that can occur. And sometimes what we also need to do is just try to think about, so why is my partner feeling this way? My, why is my partner doing this? Why is my partner thinking this way? Could I think about doing some of what he or she is doing or come toward my partner a little bit? Because we hope that the partner, the other partner is doing the same thing. And that's empathy. We really try to be understanding because there are going to be these differences and we want to accept them. 
as much as we can. Yeah, Terry, so I think that's a great point. And I think because, you know, like we being in um, the industry that we're in, you know, like um, we are very used to, you know, having such conversations or it, it just comes very naturally to us in that sense. But I think, you know, like a lot of people have shared with me that they are not used to having these conversations and they don't even know where to start. You know, they are like, how, how do I even like, you know, build this up? Like, do, do I just go to my partner and say, you know, like, yes, you know, how are you doing? I, I want to talk to you about, you know, like how I've been feeling. So do you have any like very practical sort of uh, tips, you know, for some of these couples who, you know, definitely want to do what we have been sharing, right. but at the same time, just don't know how to go about it? Right. And that's such a good question because most people are not used to it. Even if one person is used to it, the <laughs> other isn't, right? Yeah. Another difference. The first thing that I always recommend is that within you, anyone who's watching, any listeners, you want to know that it's really good to share your concerns, your fears, your anxieties, because when we hold them in, they fester and they grow and they become larger and they affect us and our physical and mental health. So that's the first important thing to know that not to be hesitant, to know that it's a good thing and that it really is important and beneficial for your health and well-being. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I always recommend, Violet, is to first think about what do you feel? What are your concerns? And what are your anxieties? Because sometimes when we come to our partner, we have no idea. And so then it gets muddled and then it gets, you know, conflictive. And so first identify, you know, I'm feeling very stressed. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my health. We're in uncertain times. I like things planned. That's what then you want to share with your partner. So first identify. And then when you go to your partner, Violet, mm -hmm. use your eye language. So very important because mm. automatically, I think what we want to do is do the you statements. Like yep. you're not listening to me. You're different. You want to watch the news 24 seven and I can't, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when we use our you statements, what happens is, is that our partners get defensive. And mm. they shut down. And it's yeah. really hard to talk. Yeah. So if you come and you express, I'm feeling this, because you've already identified that, that's what you want to do. And then stop. Silence is okay. Mm -hmm. And let your partner talk. So don't assume that your partner is going to jump in immediately. It's going mm -hmm. to give you a hug, right? Mm -hmm. Silence is okay. You can wait. You can be patient and then see how your partner reacts and responds. My guess, my mm -hmm. strong science-based guess mm -hmm. <laughs> is that when you come and you've already know what you're going to say and you use your I statements and you're patient and silence is okay, that your partner is going to respond in kind. Because what we know research shows is that when you disclose, your partner discloses in kind. If you give them a few seconds, even a minute, and be patient. Wow, I, I think that's fantastic. So, you know, like for those of you who have just joined us, you know, a couple of you have joined us, you know, please uh, like, you know, or uh, share this post if you find it useful and please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. So, you know, we are definitely very happy to answer any questions that you might have. And today we are talking about how, you know, you can survive and not just survive, but thrive in your relationships in this time of uh, COVID-19. So, you know, like um, what Terry has just shared, you know, it's very important firstly to identify your own feelings to identify how you are going through this and then you know when you sit your partner down or you just you know having a nice meal and having the conversation focus on i i language and not you statements which is what we are usually very um used to doing right because when something doesn't do not go right we will tend to blame the other party first you know so instead of doing that you know let's focus on i like how uh, did this make me feel you know like what i'm feeling what are some of the things that i'm going through and i think you know one very important part that sometimes we tend to forget to do is just to pause 
right? right? To pause, <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. And I'm not very good at that either, Violet, because you want to keep talking or you want your partner to respond really quickly. The other thing I should mention too, Violet, is that when you sit down with your partner to share those I statements, right? And allow pause, allow silence, make sure that all other distractions are out of the way so that you mm. don't have your phone. The television isn't on. The kids aren't yeah. there, right? Extended yeah family aren't at the table as well. (laughs) And that always helps because then your partner and you can really focus on the discussion. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So um, I think that the other thing that I wanted to uh, ask you about, right, is like what sort of relationships or which relationships are most likely to suffer, you know, during these times? Like what are some of the red flags that, you know, our listeners should be looking out for? Right. I think those couples or those relationships that were already distressed, Mm -hmm. right, are going to be the ones that might be most affected by the COVID-19 situation or pandemic or sheltering at home because they were already having distress, having issues or having problems. Mm -hmm. But my recommendation always, Violet, is, is that we take back the control. It's not Mm. the pandemic. It's not COVID-19 that's going to affect us. Mm -hmm. It's us that can remain in control and that have the choice of what to do with the either stress that was already occurring within our relationship or our household or the stress that's coming from outside and affecting our relationship. So we have the ability and we have control. And that's really important because when we give out control, then we're much more likely to be affected emotionally. And we're much more likely not to be able to take some practical steps or strategies to help our relationship. So even if your relationship was already distressed, take back control. It's your choice to either try to implement some strategies and steps or not. And it's your choice to either stay or leave the relationship as well. And so take back control, even if your relationship was already distressed. And by the way, stress to relationships and couples is not unusual. It Mm -hmm. happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, People lose jobs, people have financial difficulties, people have unfortunate situations with families. And so other things can occur to stress relationships, just like COVID-19 and the pandemic. But even in those situations, take control. It's your choice to try to implement the strategies that I hope we talk about today Mm -hmm. um, to either stay or leave, to either help your relationship or not. Yeah, thank you, Terry. And I so agree with that. So one of the things that uh, Jamie and I have been doing, and sometimes together with our kids as well, is to do this, uh, what we call three intentions, you know, every day. Mm. So I think this really, you know, tie back to what you have just said, you know, it's really about taking back control. And really, we have the choice. So I think, you know, like one of the things, you know, is that we just get affected by things that they are happening around us. So for example, like the news that we are reading, just all this, you know, like maybe negative information that's, uh, we are hearing but at the end of the day we have the ability to choose how to feel so you know like the three intentions that we do every day is like the first one is to really um how do i intend to feel today you know, so rather than how do I feel today, it's really like how do I intend to feel because, you know, we can have control and we can have the choice. And uh, the second question is, you know, who do I intend to help? So, you know, okay. I feel that, you know, when we are not focusing just on ourselves, but really mm-hmm. focusing on others, I think, you know, like it just give us this space, you know, to just feel so much better, to, to be grateful. And, you know, I highly... um encourage all couples to be doing this because you know like you can also say okay you know today i want to help my spouse you know I want to help you with certain things and uh, the third question is um what do i intend to complete today you know so what is the one task that i intend to complete today so i think you know like by doing this um intentions exercise it really helps you to become grounded to be very clear each day um what you can do you know like and like you say to really take back control Right. I like those three intentions, Violet. That's such great advice and absolutely right. I think when couples can do that as well, that allows them or us, me, 
as a partner to take control and that it is my choice how I respond to the situation. Yep. <laughs> Thank like you that. for that. I like that a yeah. lot. Yeah. So um, we, we do have, you know, like um, newcomers who's like watching us right now. So uh, welcome guys. And uh, like I say earlier, you know, please feel free to leave any questions that you might have for uh, Terry. You know, like we are definitely very happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, yeah, I just want to shout out to uh, Kaylee who have just joined us. So um, Terry, like um, I think we have talked about, you know, the strategy behind it. So, and we also talk about at some point, like maybe you know um, couples will realize okay what am I going to do am I going to stay or am I going to leave but so what point um, would it be where they think you think that they need to look out for that they really should seek external help mm -hmm. I think um, there are first Violet several strategies that you as a partner can implement or mm -hmm. you can try first before before you seek help. Um, yeah. And that is first, I always recommend that we talked about accepting differences and knowing mm -hmm. that even if you and your partner differ on some important things like news consumption, like emotional reactions, like um, protection uh, strategies, that mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that your relationship is in trouble or yeah. the partner is wrong for you. Next, I always talk about that during stressful times, um, it's really hard for partners to give emotional social support to the other partner, but that the other partner really needs it. And so one of the things you want to think about as a partner is to remember that everyone has only a certain amount of social support to give. And when the tank gets low because they're stressed as well, there's only so much to give. And so remember that as well. Be accepting of your partner not being able to give you every single thing you want, even though we all need social support and support and assistance and affection and listening and communication during that time. So remember that as well. Um, I also talk about that it's really important for couples to find an activity to do together that has a joint outcome. Um, that can also boost a relationship before you go outside the relationship. So find an activity that you both really enjoy, like a cooking class, and then you make a meal together. Um, you could go and do an art class and make a piece of art together. You could watch a movie together together and then discuss it. So there are these activities that you could do virtually or at home. You could make a meal at home. You could watch a comedy club um, that you could do together that has a joint outcome that will boost your relationship. And what we know science shows, Violet, is that if it's fun, and you can laugh at the same time, that will even help your relationship even more. Um, we are very serious right now. Things are stressful, but we forget that relationships also need to be fun and full of the laughter and growth, and we need to be smiling, right? And that helps us as individuals, but it also helps our relationships. So fun, find a fun activity that you could do together. Um, that's also very important. And the last thing I've been talking to people about, Violet, mm -hmm. is to make sure that you affirm your partner. Mm -hmm. You know, we all want to be noticed, cared for, made to feel special. We all want somebody to say, I see you, right? Mm -hmm. You are important to me. Yeah. And when we're stressed, we forget to do that with our partner because so much is going on. And we have children and for parents out there, you know, you're teaching the children at home and you're worried about your parents and other family members and your job and your salary and your income. So we forget to wake up and give one piece of affirmation to our partner every single day because when our partner is seen, they're happier and the relationship is happier over time. And you can do that through words or through actions, Violet. Mm -hmm. Words are, I love you. I, you make my life exciting. I'm so happy to be married to you, right? Mm -hmm. I would still choose you if I had to do it all over again. You're the best father, the best 
husband, or you can do it through actions. You can give a hug or a kiss. You can turn on the coffee pot in the morning because you know your partner needs caffeine. You can make your partner a special meal, dessert. And when our partners feel special and noticed, they're happier, as I said, and the relationship is better and more healthier over time. Now, all of those are really important strategies, Violet. And so I encourage people who are listening to try those strategies first. Then, wow, that's that's awesome. So, you know, like to all of you who's watching now, you know, like uh, please like this post or share this post if you feel that, you know, that has been helpful for you. And uh, we have a common friend, Tammy. So uh, she has shared in the comment, she said <laughs> she say that, you know, uh, we took up pickleball together. I'm, mm. I'm not sure what pickleball is. Do you know what pickleball is? No, I don't know what pickleball <laughs> is either. Yeah, but it sounds is that fun. like dad <laughs> So it was fun and yeah. they did it together, which is so yeah. nice because that joint activity really bonded, Tammy. Yes, and her yes, yes, yes. That, that's awesome. And I mean, I love all the steps that you have given, you know, like um, especially, you know, the one where you say that when it comes to giving emotional and social support. Mm -hmm. And I really like the illustration that you give you know like that you know you, you kind of like put out you know there's this tank right and right, because right. Uh, right now we are all at home you know we might not have the chance to recharge that tank so you know obviously right. different people recharge it differently and some people they recharge it by you know being outdoors you know like doing sports or like maybe being with your friends or maybe just um, at their workplace but they can't do all of that right now and as a okay. result you know like their tank is really running low so I, I think that's such a great illustration because I think sometimes we don't see that we just kind of see like why aren't we getting you know the support from our uh, partner you know like um why why is it uh, why isn't he more forthcoming or why isn't she you know like uh, uh reaching out more but I think you know by just understanding that and visualizing that we realize that you know they are trying to give us as much as they can can. And right. then and it like might be up. different yeah. from before yes. as well. And that's something yes. to remember. They used to be doing this and they're not yes. anymore. Yes. And, and then, you know, like tying back to the um, fourth tip that you give us, which is, you know, affirming your partner. So I, I think that's great. You know, so once again, you know, it's like maybe getting the refilling of the tank outside but by us you know like actually making that choice making that decision and taking control of that uh, decision and then affirming them that would actually help them refill that tank so you know it's like kind of like um, reciprocal I, I, I love reciprocal. that reciprocal Yes, and yeah. you know what I found too, Violet, for everybody to remember is that men need that affirmation even more than women. I mean, mm -hmm. we're lucky. We are probably talking to friends. We get it from our family members. We get it via text or calls now. But men often don't get that from other people in their lives. And mm -hmm. in that long-term study that I mentioned, or we talked about at the beginning yeah. of this, um, as I've been following the couples over time, when men say that they get that affirmation from their mm -hmm. partners, that couple is almost two times more likely to be happier and stay wow. together over time. And that That's wasn't great. true for the women. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so important, especially as women, but even mm -hmm. as men, to give other men that affirmation, that special mm -hmm. attention, and make yeah. sure that we refuel, as you said, their tanks. Yes. So, um, you know, like there's this saying that I think, you know, we, we have definitely uh, heard a lot, uh, maybe in our industry, but maybe some of our listeners have never heard this before. So they say, you know, like um, love is to, uh, okay, respect is to a man, like what love is to a woman. So I think, you know, like based on what you have just said just now, where, you know, yeah. men actually need like more affirmation. Like, right. um, so, so what, what, what do you think about this statement? I think that's a great statement. You know, I've never heard that, Violet. So, <laughs> but I think that it is so true that respect, attention, and it's not negative. I think we all need attention. I mean, I all we as psychologists think that we have a biological need to be needed. It's that as women, we get that need fulfilled, that attention, that respect from many others, and men don't. Yes. And so they need that respect or attention or affirmation from their partners. Thank you so much for that. I like that. So um, 
I think, you know, like, it's not, like you say, you know, it's just not about the lockdown because at the end of the day, like, you know, the lockdown or COVID-19 is just one of the various stresses or one of the many stresses that a relationship will go through in their lifetime. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, the question is really uh, what next, right? Like, you know, like after this lockdown, you know, even when they can start leaving the house and, you know, like continue with their lives as per, you know, before, what are some of the ways that people can really look at building a strong and fulfilling relationship? Because I think you did mention earlier as well that you know the relationships that tend to suffer more uh, right now would probably be relationships where you know maybe there are already some problems before that but maybe right. they tend to kind of sweep it under the carpet but you know now that they are together 24 7 you know like it's it, the carpet is already full you know it's already bulging you can no longer ignore right. it right and maybe right. that's right. the reason why they are having some of these challenges so you know what what are some some of the tips that you can give you know and right. I, I know you have so much because you know i've attended so many different um um, uh, lectures that you have given you know mm -hmm. but uh, what would you say would be like maybe like um you know three to five tips that some of our listeners can take back with them to really start building this strong and fulfilling relationships right well good question because we all want happy healthy relationships and i think we all deserve happy healthy relationships and i should say violet that one of the things to think about is that Yes, we are all concerned right now with COVID-19 for our physical health, but when we have happy, healthy relationships, we have better physical health as well. So one of the ways to have better physical health, even a better immune system, is to make sure that we're surrounded by either a happy, healthy relationship or many happy, healthy relationships with family members and friends and, and children and parents as well. But as we get out of COVID-19 pandemic, which I hope is very soon, um, first, I would recommend, as I said, that you do affirmation every single day. And so even when you're out of the house and going out, remember to wake up and have the intention, as you said, to give your partner one affirmation every single day. Make sure you say it or give it because that will build a happy, healthy relationship. Second, one of the things that I always talk about is communication. And I have found, as I've talked to these couples for the last 32 years, that most couples think they're really communicating all the time. And so when I say that, everybody says, oh, we're communicating, we're doing it. But what most couples are really doing, Violet, is what I call maintaining the household. They're mm. talking about who should take care of the kids, do the laundry, the grocery shopping, pay the bills, call mom. And that's not real communication. Again, that's wow. maintaining a yep. household. I think that's a great point. Yep. And, and that doesn't build a happy, healthy relationship, by the way, <laughs> maintaining a household. It keeps a family together but it doesn't build yeah. a happy, healthy relationship. Yeah. Communication or real communication, Violet, is sharing your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, your stressors. And what I have developed and talk a lot about in my books is what I call practicing the 10-minute rule to do true, real communication. And that is, Violet, every single day, talking to your partner for at least 10 minutes, you can talk more if you want, mm -hmm. yes. but at least 10 minutes about something other than work, mm -hmm. family or children, mm -hmm. who's going to do what around the house or your relationship. So you do not talk about those four topics. Now I know people are trying to, or thinking, <laughs> What do I talk about, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's not like I always have those answers either. But yeah. there are a lot of things to talk about. You can yeah. talk about sports, movies, interests, hobbies. You can also talk about these personal questions like if you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? Would you still work? What would you do in five years if you weren't doing what you're doing now? Who was your favorite teacher in high school, right? There's so many questions that you can ask. And in fact, Art Aaron has developed the 36 item questionnaire yes. to build intimacy yeah. over time. And I recommend people check those out and ask some of them to their yes. partner during those 10 minutes. So that's another big tip. Mm -hmm. Third, 
I would say it's okay to give your partner space mm -hmm. and it's okay for you to ask for space from your partner. That's true, by the way, during the COVID-19 pandemic, that's yep. true when it ends as well. Yep. We think that when we want our own interests or our own friends or time alone in a corner to read a book, that there's something wrong with the relationship. But what I have found with my couples is that they say when they do have time alone, that adds excitement, that adds wanting to go back to the partner and spend quality time with them. Now, you don't want too much space. You want to have quality time with your partner, right? But it's okay to say to your partner, I would like two hours this afternoon to call my best friend and I'll be back after the two hours. That's true during COVID-19, by the way. It's okay to say, I need two hours this afternoon to go read a book, to listen to a podcast, to do whatever, and then come back. And when you share what you did with your partner and you're transparent and there are no secrets, it can yep. add excitement and adventure and newness to the relationship. And the last tip, by the way, is all about passion and excitement, yep. right? It's okay that passion declines over mm -hmm. time in a relationship. It's inevitable. We can't keep that passion <laughs> and the excitement going, we can't. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. bodies can't, right? But passion is fueled by newness, mm -hmm. mystery, and arousal producing activities. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a long-term relationship and you're out of COVID-19 pandemic, the pandemic, but even when you're at home right now, remember newness um, fuels passion and excitement. Mm -hmm. You can do anything new with your partner. As Tammy said, a new activity, but you can also try a new food. You can watch a new movie. Any new or novel activity builds mm -hmm. passion. Second, surprise. Remember to surprise your partner, whether it's telling them something or doing something for them. Surprise, that oh wow moment mm -hmm. builds passion. And arousal producing activities are activities that have adrenaline or arousal connected to that activity, like exercise, scary movies. When you're out of the pandemic, you can go to an amusement park and ride a roller coaster, right? But even now, during this pandemic, do an exercise class with your partner online. The arousal that's produced through the exercise or the other activities can get transferred to your partner or your relationship. It's almost like we're tricking our brains <laughs> and saying, oh, I feel adrenaline. It's not due to the exercise. It's due to my hot partner over here, right? <laughs> and that builds yeah. passion and excitement yeah. because we don't want to get in those relationship ruts because boredom, I have mm -hmm. found, eats away at happiness. So make sure that you are doing these other activities to get out of the boredom, to get out of the rut and reignite the passion over time. Wow, that's amazing. You know, like while you're talking, I've written down so many notes and um, I actually have your book right here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, thank um, you. yeah, so I, I got this book from Terry the last time, you know, like I met her. So if you guys know that love what you're hearing from her, you can get her book uh, from Amazon, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, yes, Amazon. Yes, yes. Thank you, and, Violet. I mean, it's like, um, it is, it's great. And, you know, those of you who are watching right now, if you have just joined us, you know, like we have another about 15 minutes. So, you know, please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. And, uh, you know, if you like what uh, Terry has been sharing with us so far, you know, please uh, show some love by liking the post or sharing the post. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. um, Terry, I'm, I mean, it's like, um, I, I love this. You know, there are just so many things that um, I've learned from your sharing. And I, I definitely agree with you that sometimes, you know, like people uh, just lose the awareness uh, because it's just so easy right to just get into mm -hmm. this um, routine and then you know because especially when you have kids and then like the only thing you talk about are the kids and it right. kind of become a crutch sometimes 
you know, right. because like you, you have nothing to talk about. You are like, okay, what should I talk about? Let's, let's just talk about the kids because right. usually the kids, you know, <laughs> like um, either uh, give you a lot of joy or maybe, you know, you get frustrated together, but you're like, okay, it's okay. At least that's a common point. And I think right. that's also the reason why a lot of couples, you know, like once the kids like leave home and they have uh, an empty nest and then they started to realize that they really have nothing in common and then they end up getting a divorce as well. And that is so true. There are two very common periods of time for divorce, Violet. One is about year six or seven when you're having the children and it's very stressful. And then yeah. at about 25 to 30 years of being with a partner. Wow. And as you said, it's typically coincides with when the children leave home. And then you look at your partner again and you say, who is this person? What do we have in common? And I do think it's common, Violet, to put your relationship on the back burner and say to yourself, okay, when things settle down, when things are less stressful, I will get back to my partner and my relationship. But what we both know probably, and yeah. many others, is that it doesn't calm down. And yeah. so I encourage couples to take that relationship off the back burner and make sure you pay attention to it. Mm -hmm all the time yeah I, I i totally agree with it and um i i love what you said that uh boredom eats away at our happiness yes yeah so, it does. so I mean, yeah i i think you know like people end up you know having um leave their relationship or maybe like one party you know like ends up walking out of the relationship or, or maybe you know like starting to have an affair and things like that i mean of course you know we are not saying that um it's anybody's fault. But I just think, you know, what you have brought up is just so important that, you know, if we start feeling bored, it's important that we do something about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because, and take control yeah. again, as you said. Yeah. And, you know, some people like routine, mm -hmm. right? Because it's predictable, it's reliable, and that's okay. You can still have structure. You can still do a lot of the same things, but make sure you infuse some difference. And it doesn't have yeah. to be huge just little small changes. Think about it in terms of a job, Violet, because when you're at a job, at first you like the routine, right? I know how and what to do and I <laughs> yep. know the structure. I come in at a certain time and I have you know, these tasks that I'm going to do and then I come in the next day and do the same thing. But after a year, you start to get bored with your job and you're not growing in yep. your job. And so yep. think about the job as your partner. <laughs> what you want to do is make sure that you challenge yourself, add yes. newness, add mystery, and get yourself out of that boredom and out of that rut. Because when you're at a job even and you're bored, you start thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be at this job. Maybe there are better jobs out there, right? Mm. So it's the same thing that happens when we're in a relationship. So infuse the newness, the mystery, challenge yourself, grow together, do different things so that you're not bored and you continue to stay happy. Wow, I, I think that's a great analogy. I've never looked at it that way and I'm sure a lot of our listeners today have never looked at it that way as well. But but you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right if you think about it because, you know, like a lot of people sometimes they just kind of feel that, you know, working to be in that relationship or working to get married, you know, and that's it. You know, they're like, oh, you know, I'm at the finishing line, you know, like now I'm right. married, I can just relax, I can just, you know, like take a break. But we, we obviously know that that's not true. And, um, but I think the way you put it is so true, you know, it's like just like a job, like, uh, and that, that's what I do with my um, associates at work as well. I make okay. sure that, you know, like um, at every point, because of course, when they are first starting a new role, you know, like they're still learning, it's exciting, you know, like they are getting a new knowledge, but at some point they can do the job with their eyes closed. Right. Yep. And, and, exactly. and yes, and yes, it's, it's, it's nice, you know, to be able to do that. But as you rightly say, it, it gets boring, you know, and That's then they boring. feel not challenged. They feel that they're not getting anywhere and they're like, hmm, you know, maybe I should look for a new job, right? right. So what, what I always do with my associates is that before they get to that point, you know, like just as mm -hmm. when they are getting really good at what they are doing, mm -hmm. then I'll kind of like challenge them with something else, you know, maybe mm -hmm. put them into a new role or maybe, you know, like give them some uh, managerial responsibilities to, to just keep challenging them, keeping them on their toes so that they, they find it interesting and exciting. 
I love that, Violet. That's so important because we know in science or research, even in the work realm, satisfaction in terms of satisfaction with work, the number one predictor is growth, is being challenged. And so that when we don't feel like we are growing personally and we're not challenged, mm -hmm. people become dissatisfied at work. So you're, that's great advice for anybody <laughs> out there too, who yeah. is a work manager or a supervisor, make sure that your employees are challenged and back to the relationship realm or arena, make sure that you are challenged and you add newness to your relationship as well. Because personal growth is important. We forget that again. We think that it's, a you know, relationships are about raising children and earning income as I said, but it's also about personal growth and fun and enjoyment and liking to be with somebody, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. So uh, we have Clarine. So she's asking me, what is the book? Okay, so the book is called Five Simple Steps to Take Your Marriage from Good to Great. Yeah, by uh, Dr. Terry Obak. So I, I will post up um, the link to this later uh, on, on my page. And um, we have Tammy who say that, uh, I try to remind myself that men love to be respected and admired. So I try to communicate on how I admire and respect him, his efforts, his talents, contributions, etc. Uh, so for example, we have new bathroom uh, for sets this week thanks to how DIY handy and talented he is. Yeah. So, so I, I, I hope that, you know, like her husband or partner is reading this right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I like, right. Yes. She, she did double <laughs> affirmation, telling him and then listen, I mean, sharing it today. Yes, yes. And it's so yes. true. It's just that little comment that Tammy was talking about. It's just yes. like, thank you so much for doing that. Or I've noticed that you've been helping around the house more. It's such yes. a small, all change that has such a big effect, Violet. Yes. I know, you know, I posted something about my husband, um, mm -hmm. probably the second week of the pandemic. Yes. And everybody was like, wow, that was so nice. And yes. I tried to say it was such a small thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to recognize all the help and support that I've been getting yes. from my husband. Yes. Right. So it's just such a small little thing that we can all do, just like Tammy did. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so um, Terry, I actually have some questions, you know, like that I, I have uh, received, you know, even before this call, and I just want to run them through you to see maybe you can give some advice to uh, some of them. So um, I think, you know, like um, some of the parents right now, you know, uh, they are stressed out at home because not only they have to work from home, they also have to deal with the kids being at home as well because, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, the schools are doing like uh, home-based learning. That's what we call it here in uh, Singapore or maybe in other countries, they might call it homeschooling. So, you know, like you not only have your partner being in the same uh, room, same house, but you have all your kids, you know, being at the same place at the same time. So what, what are some of your advice, you know, mm -hmm. for them to deal with this situation? Well, some of my advice actually, Violet, is very similar to what I was encouraging couples to do. First, accept that there are going to be differences between your children, if you have more than one, or with your children and yourself as a parent. So they may be emotionally responding to stress differently than you. So accepting those differences and listening to them is really important. Also, I encourage parents to share some of their concerns. And again, you want to make sure that you um, uh, are aware of differences in age with your children, but it's okay for you to share so that they can share their concerns as, and anxieties as well, because it's important for them to do that, right? Get it out of them. Also, kids are watching us, right? Especially during this time, if you're a parent. So make sure also you're aware that they're observing how you are dealing with stress. So if you want them to journal or do yoga or exercise or listen to music, you can tell them all of those strategies. But even better is for you to show it. So when you do those strategies, they are much more likely to do those healthy strategies for stress as well, because they're all healthy coping strategies. So remember that as well. Also, 
it's very easy for couples and for families now to have the pandemic be 24 seven in the household, part of discussions, part of television or news. I encourage families instead to have what I call family time. Mm -hmm. And so there are two hours or a certain part of the day that we talk about the pandemic or share our concerns and anxieties. And one of the things I have heard as a strategy that I think is amazing is to have what I call a share jar. That each Mm. child and each parent, when they feel something or when they experience something or they have a question, write it down, put it in the jar, and then during your family time, you take it out and you talk about the concern, the question, the anxiety, the fear. That way, the child or the parent gets it out It's in the jar, you discuss it, but the pandemic doesn't infuse your family life 24 seven. Also, just like with couples, Violet, make sure that you have structure, make sure that you have a plan, make sure that you have intentions as you discussed every day, what am I going to do today? What should we do this week? What should we do this weekend? Kids love structure very important. And it's better for their well-being when they have that structure and we have that plan. And also do fun activities with your children. Play board games, which I know you and Jamie love. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we have played that um, together as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so important. Just like with couples and their relationships to have fun activities, also with the family. So yes, your homeschooling, teaching at home, talking about the pandemic, but also do board games, watch movies, have picnics on the floor, go for a walk outside if you can all kinds of fun activities, important as well for the family. So those are just some of the strategies that I would recommend because yes, parents are stressed and families are stressed right now as well. I think those are great strategies and I especially love what you shared about the share jar. Yes. Yeah, so so I think, you know, I've heard people doing it for like, uh, they call it the gratitude jar, you know, like when mm-hmm. something good happened and then they put it in. But I think this share jar is great, you know, like so whenever people are feeling certain things that they just kind of write it down, put it in and at the next session to, you know, like just take one of these and talk about it. Exactly. And you know, I do that for couples when I'm coaching them or doing counseling as well. If they want to try a new activity, and you could do this with your kids actually too. If you want a fun new activity with the family now or with your couple relationship, everybody can write five things down in the jar, put it in the jar, and you can have a fun activity jar. And Every day, pick one out. Everyone agrees or you and your partner agree that when we pick something out, we're both going to do it together. I love when people write things down because that allows us to do another sense, S-E-N-S-E. Yeah, sense. (laughs) Um, So when we see it, we write it, we hear it, right? The more we can do our senses, the more it gets infused within us physically and psychologically. Wow, I had to I think about that. how to spell for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that. I, I think my kids are going to love that because, you know, sometimes, you know, there's all this debate about, you know, who mm-hmm. wants to do what and someone else wants to do something else. Yeah. Yes, and, then, and then, you know, exactly. there's like, you know, they can't agree. So I, I think what you're saying is like, okay, everybody just commit to writing a certain number of things, just put it into the jar. And every time, you know, like we take turns and pick one out and whatever gets picked, we are just going to do that. You know, we are so, just you know, going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so typical, right? That there's debate. When we yeah. go out for a restaurant before, you know, yeah. the pandemic, we would have a debate about where we should go, right? Yeah. So what the jar does is take away that conflict. Yeah. So you're still, re- everybody's really excited to go or to play yeah. the fun activity. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I love that. So, um, hi guys. So we are one minute away <laughs> from uh, 11. Thank you so much for watching, you know, like, um, yeah. and if you have any further questions, you can still put it here, you know, I'm sure Terry later when she sees it, maybe she can get around to answering some of these okay. questions. I just want to take this time to really thank Terry for her time, for giving oh, me your you, very Violet. precious one hour and to share with us all these great strategies and tips on how we can help relationships, not just to survive during COVID. COVID-19, but also to thrive. And like I say, I have learned so much from your sharing as well. And you know, I've heard you so many times, but every single time I hear you, I take away something new with me. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Violet. Well, I so appreciate having me on today and it's been wonderful to talk with you and it's great to see you as well. <laughs> so I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you listeners as well viewers. Okay, so uh, you have a great uh, rest of your day because I understand now it's only 11 a.m. for you. <laughs> so right. enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your last day for April before we go into May. Oh, and great. like you say, you know, like we hope that this uh, pandemic is going to be over soon and I can catch up with you again either in London, either in US or maybe in Singapore and we are going to play our board games together. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.